Hey, Campfire crew, let's get it on. Wasn't My Nanny, submitted by Midwest Gal. Just found your channel and hope I can get this to you for Thanksgiving, or whenever you can read it, if you will. When I was 13 years old, I lived in a tiny little town called Sulphur in Oklahoma. And it is tiny. Maybe 9,000 people live there total. My mom took off on my dad when I was five and my brother was seven. Skanko just told my dad one day she was going to L.A. or some shit and was gone. Never really saw her again, although every once in a while she sends me messages or emails, and I don't look at them. She can fuck right off. My grandparents jumped in to help take care of me and my brother, as my dad worked construction all year round and busted his ass for us. Still is a great man, and a great papa to my kids now, too. Guy never flinched when his wife bailed on him. I remember he just scooped us up together on our living room couch and said, It's going to be different, but I've got you, my little muskrats. That's what he and my papa always called me and my brother, the muskrats. Anyway, my nanny and I were really close as she was the only female figure in my day-to-day, -day, and though she was a hard ass, she was the best. When she died, it took years off my papa's life, and I was really devastated. I still am sad in a lot of ways. Well, one day I heard my papa talking to my dad about her being gone. This was right around Thanksgiving that year. He was talking about how much he'd love to talk with her just one more time, and I got to thinking the same thing. This was the height of all those ghost hunter shows that I was all into, and somehow I got it into my head that maybe I could connect with my nanny through a Ouija board. I know, it was silly. I told my brother about it. His name is Scott. And two days before Thanksgiving, I also brought it up again to my cousin Millie when her family came to our house for the holiday. Yeah, we were stupid kids, but man, I thought I would give it a shot. Sorry about the long backstory. I want to get into the rest of it now. My nanny was buried in a cemetery not super far away from our house, maybe a mile and a half up the way. It was the Wednesday before Turkey Day, so me and my cousin and my brother were just sitting around talking and playing PlayStation when I brought it up again. We should go visit Nanny and see if we can talk to her with my Ouija board, I said. I had the regular one that you can buy at Walmart. Of course, they both thought it was a good idea, Millie a little more thinking it was stupid, but she was on board. Guys, I'm talking about living in Sulphur. It's 90 miles outside of Oklahoma City there wasn't that much to do, and I was really hopeful that maybe I could connect with my nanny. So I packed up some candles in my board in a backpack and we decided to ride our bikes to the cemetery. It was clear and like 60 degrees out when we set off around 4.15, 4.30. I knew it would be dark soon and figured that was the better time to do all of that stuff. Why? I don't know. Again, kid logic. We got to the cemetery gate and went in to find Nanny's spot, and there was no one else around. I mean, why would there be? It was now getting darker, and I set the board on the grass over Nanny's grave and then put candles between each of us. I started saying out loud that we wanted to speak to the spirit of my Nanny before my brother and I put our hands on the pointer. I repeated that over and over because I saw a show once where another spirit came in and it wasn't who the people thought they were talking to foreshadowing for us. My brother and I put our hands on the pointer and waited for something to happen, but nothing did. I wasn't moving it, he wasn't moving it, nothing was moving it. Then Millie said, oh for God's sake, let me try. She'd been balking the whole time about how silly this was and nothing was real about it. So she put her hands on the pointer and suddenly it started to move. I thought for sure she was just doing it to get a rise out of me, but she looked up at me as her hands kept moving and her jaw dropped. You're not moving that? I whispered, and she looked at me kind of scared and said, Nuh-uh. Her eyes were wide open. She started asking questions. 
Who are we speaking with? It just went to yes. She asked again and the pointer went back to yes. I noticed the wind picked up a little at this point and the candles were flickering and almost going out. Millie asked more questions about her family and answers were coming. What's the name of the boy Terry likes? Something Millie wouldn't know. But it's spelled out J-E-F-F. I did have a crush on a guy named Jeff. Who is Scott's favorite teacher at school? Mr. Johnson came back. That was the truth. We were weirded out at that point. But then things got creepier. Millie asked, When will I die? And it slowly spelled out S-O-O-N. She looked up at me, and it was dark by now. Only the light from the candles played on the board in our faces. The wind picked up some more, and a weird noise came from off to the side of the cemetery. It was this low, mewling sound. I don't know what it was. Millie said out loud again, When? And the board spelled back, S-O-O-N. Then the weird mewling started to sound like a woman wailing. Before Millie asked another question, the pointer spelled out D-E-A-T-H. And that's when Millie took her hands off the thing. I grabbed it and asked if this was Nanny, and immediately it went to yes, but then pulled to no. I swear to God I was not moving that thing. I said it out loud, Nanny, is that you? Finally it stopped on no. The wind burst out and blew out the candles and we heard a huge popping or cracking sound off to our left, and then a massive thud. A huge tree branch had broken off a tree maybe 15 feet from us and smashed on the ground. We all jumped and I said, this is over. But we didn't do the whole closeout thing. I just threw the board in my bag and left the candles and said, let's get the hell out of here. As we got on our bikes, the wailing got louder and seemed to be coming from the tree to our left where the branch had just fallen. Scott yelled, go! and we all pedaled down the cemetery road back to the main road. Scott and I had lights on our bikes, but Millie had my dad's bike that didn't, so she just followed us along in the dark. As we rode as fast as we could back to our house, we heard the cemetery gates smash shut behind us. That wailing sound was getting louder, and now the wind was blowing like mad. Millie was practically crying, and so was I as we just rode as fast as we could that wailing following right behind us. We got to my street, flew down it, and up our driveway to my open garage. Once we were inside, we jumped off our bikes. Scott hit the button for the door closer, and just as the door hit home, there was a loud BOOM that came from outside the door. The wailing had stopped, and we all stood looking at each other. We've got to close that session out, I said and explained that I'd seen it on a show that that was the proper way to do things, and maybe this wailing would stop and whatever the hell was outside would go away. We were all so worked up, but I felt it would help, so I pulled the board back out, took the pointer, put it on it, and said, We are done talking, and pushed it to goodbye. I wasn't sure if that was the correct way to do it, but that's all I did. The wind kept up, and we went inside totally freaking out. My dad and aunt and uncle and papa were in our living room, and my dad asked what that loud boom was. I lied and said it was my bike falling against a garbage can. The three of us went to my room, and I put the board away, and we all caught our breath, whispering about what had happened. We all agreed it was crazy, but did our Ouija board just cause all that? Or was everything that happened just coincidence? I mean, were we really moving the pointer and not really understanding or knowing that we were? Later that night, when everyone was going to bed, my dad called me over and asked if everything was okay. I could never lie to my dad, and I told him what we had done, and he gave me the really kid face. I told him we thought it was just a game, and how much I really wanted to talk to Nanny after I had heard Papa talking about it. But I told him all those things really happened, and then said we really thought something followed us home because of that wailing sound. It stayed with us the whole way home. 
He smiled and gave me a hug and said, Kid, it was just your imagination. I went back to my bedroom and Millie was still awake and we talked about it for a long time that night. We finally fell asleep. The next morning I went into the kitchen and my dad was standing there with a cup of coffee. He looked at me with a funny look and said, Come here, kid, I want you to see this. I followed him out onto our porch and into the driveway, and he pointed at the garage door about three feet up. There, there were two handprints that embedded themselves into the metal of the door, maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch, not a lot, but enough to see that there were two clear handprints there. That was what made the boom noise the night before. Something with two hands had smashed into our garage door and left that mark. Dad just looked at me and I said, Imagination? He put his arm around me and said, Say some prayers and get right with this. It'll all be fine. I did, and it was. It turned out to be a great Thanksgiving. But that was the last time I ever played with a Ouija board or tried to talk to my nanny like that. I don't know what it was that we did talk to, or why whatever that was followed us home out of the cemetery, but I do know it wasn't Nanny. I'm sure none of your listeners will believe this story, but it's true, and I'm sharing it anyway. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Okay, here's two more that are kind of messed up. Not super scary, but man... This shows you how fucked up some families are. Meet the Family by Anonymous I have a large family with an immense amount of borderline personality disorders. The worst instance was my Aunt A, who was going through a divorce, and Uncle B had been holding some of her belongings in storage while she got things settled. Well, Uncle B got drunk and told Aunt A that his new wife had sold a lot of her belongings because she wasn't paying for storage at their house. Well, my mother somehow got involved and tried yelling at Uncle B, and that's when Aunt C and Uncle D got involved and started a completely different argument. Meanwhile, Aunt A started chasing around Uncle B with a knife, and my cousin finally called the police. It was a full-out brawl by the time they got there, and Aunt A was taken away to a psych ward as she was sitting in her car with the knife threatening to kill herself. Yeah, this was also the first Thanksgiving I had brought my boyfriend, who's now my husband, home with me. Not a good choice. Jailbird and Moon Pie by Anonymous It was the Thanksgiving that my aunt, henceforth referred to as Jailbird, had just gotten out of jail for serious criminal offenses involving gun trafficking. Her and my other aunt, I'll call Moon Pie, which was her favorite snack, also fitting because she was round like one too. They got into an argument over who bought my sister a gift, which she had had since she was four years old. Jailbird was only 14 at the time when the gift was given to my sister, making it impossible that she had done it. And so after my grandma said, enough is enough, Shut up, you two. Both of them moped around for a few hours, but their peace was made. Or so we thought. So, Thanksgiving dinner arrived. It was going well until Moon Pie thought it'd be a good idea for her to carve the turkey. Which, my grandma seeing no issue with that, let her do it. However, during the carving, Jailbird somehow was stabbed in the leg with the carving fork. And that's when all hell broke loose. My sister and I were told to go to our rooms. We were staying with my grandmother for Thanksgiving weekend, so we occupied the guest bedroom. When we went into our room, we heard screaming and glass breaking. And then my sister and I came out to see what was happening. And Holy God, everything was a mess. My parents and everyone else were trying to keep Jailbird and Moon Pie away from each other, and not having much success. Grandma was just sitting there drinking her boxed wine and smoking away like nothing was happening while everything was happening. Anywho, long story short, I ended up calling the cops, and Jailbird and Moon Pie now have both spent time in jail, not only outside of this, but on Thanksgiving too. Good job, morons.
Hey gang, thanks for listening to this episode of Uncle Josh's True Scary Stories. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you who are celebrating. Happy past Thanksgiving for those of you who celebrated it in Canada. And hey, just have a happy day wherever you may be around the round world. I'm extremely thankful for your listenership. I'm extremely thankful for my Patreon supporters. And I'm extremely thankful for my family who allows me to do this stuff. I wish each and every one of you nothing but the best on this long holiday weekend here in the States. If you haven't already done so, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel and podcast. Make sure you hit the notification bell for every time that I upload on YouTube. Follow me on social media. All the links to that are in the description below. And of course, you can up your support. Find me on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description, as well as a link to my TeePublic storefront. More designs on the way. Get yourself some Campfire Crew merch. If you have a true scary story of any nature that you'd like to hear narrated by me, email it to Uncle Josh, true scary stories at gmail.com. I read them all. Again, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And until next time, be excellent to each other. But be wary of things that go bump in the night. It could be anything. A ghost, a monster, or the guy next door. <laughs>